Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, in this Eucharist, we pray for our young people, especially those who are gathered in Lisbon, in Portugal, for the celebration of the World Youth Day. Let us pray that they may be safe, and that this encounter may also be an encounter, a real encounter with the Lord, that when they go back home, they will bring with them the experience of grace. Also, it's been raining for several days. Let us ask the Lord to give us fine weather, enough rain for the fields, for our farms, but not so much that damages are encountered. We pray also for those who are suffering because of this bad weather. To prepare ourselves for this Eucharistic celebration, let us acknowledge that we are sinners and in need of God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Look, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who heal us through correction and save us by your forgiveness, grant to those who seek your favor that we may rejoice at the good weather for which we hope, and always use what in your goodness you bestow for the glory of your name and for our well-being. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses did exactly as the Lord had commanded him. On the first day of the first month of the second year, the dwelling was erected. It was Moses who erected the dwelling. He placed its pedestals, set up its boards, put in its bars, and set up its columns. He spread the tent over the dwelling and put the covering on top of the tent as the Lord had commanded him. 
He took the commandments and put them in the ark. He placed poles alongside the ark and set the propitiatory upon it. He brought the ark into the dwelling and hung the curtain veil, thus screening off the ark of the commandments as the Lord had commanded him. Then the cloud covered the meeting tent and the glory of the Lord filled the dwelling. Moses could not enter the meeting tent because the cloud settled down upon it and the glory of the Lord filled the dwelling. Whenever the cloud rose from the dwelling, the children of Israel would set out on their journey. But if the cloud did not lift, they would not go forward. Only when it lifted did they go forward. In the daytime, the cloud of the Lord was seen over the dwelling, whereas at night, fire was seen in the cloud by the whole house of Israel in all the stages of their journey. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. Blessed they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. Blessed the man whose strength you are, they go from strength to strength. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. I had rather one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I had rather lie at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. Let's please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the right use and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. When Jesus finished these parables, he went away from there. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning. Where can you find a perfect or the perfect parish? Where can we find the perfect workplace? Where can we find a perfect family or household? Where? A perfect parish where everybody is like an angel. A workplace where everybody uh, is like a saint. A family that does not quarrel among themselves. Where can we find those? The answer is nowhere. Wala kayong makikitang perfectong parokya. Walang perfectong workplace o lugar ng trabaho. Kahit nga po mga mag-asawa, kahit na nagmamahalan, ay nagkakatampuhan, nag-aaway, hindi nagkakaunawaan. I think that is one of the reminders of our gospel today. Yung, yung uh, sistema ng panguhuli na binanggit ng Panginoon sa Ebanghelyo, hindi maiiwasang makahuli ng iba't ibang klase ng isda. At ang sabi ng Panginoon, kukuni nila, hihilahi nila ang lambat, at pipiliin ang mga mabubuti at hindi mabuti. Now, when, when the Lord says that, He is like a Jew, a Jew at His time, who, because the Jews at, at His time believe that there are fish that are good and fish that should not be eaten. So yun ang ibig sabihin. Mga isdang pwedeng kainin, mga isdang dapat itapon, dahil hindi dapat kinakain. Ganun. Ganun ang mangyayari. Pag inihagis mo ang, ang lambat, makakahuli ka ng iba't ibang klaseng isda. At ganun din ang buhay natin sa mundo. Wala tayong makikitang pagsasamahan na perfecto. Maging sa parokya, maging sa trabaho, maging sa pamilya, maging sa lipunan. Because these are composed of people who are imperfect. We are imperfect. We are sinners. And since we are imperfect, there can be no perfect parish, perfect workplace perfect family. And so, what do we do? We learn to live with imperfection. We learn to accept one another in spite of our imperfection. Yun palagay kong isa sa mga challenges sa atin ng Ibanghelyo. Ang, ma, ang tanggapin ang ating kapwa sa kabila ng kanyang kahinaan, sa kabila ng kanyang mga pagkakamali. Kung ang hahanapin mo lang ay yung mga taong hindi nagkakamali, hindi nagkakasala, laging tama ang sinasabi at ginagawa, ay wala kang makikitang ganong tao. So, sa makatwid, dapat nating matutunan na tanggapin ang isa't isa sa kabila ng ating mga kahinaan. And I think that is what the, the Lord does with us. The Lord loves us. The Lord accepts us. The Lord welcomes us in spite of our sins and imperfections.
Kung sasabihin ng Panginoon, yun lang papasok ng simbahan ay yung mga banal, yung mga hindi nagkakasala. Walang pwedeng makapasok. Pero tanggap tayo ng Panginoon sa kabila ng ating mga kakulangan. Kung ganun ang Diyos sa atin, hindi ba't dapat ganun din tayo dapat na maging sa isa't isa? Pero, babala din naman ng Ibanghelyo. There is a warning. No? There is a warning in the parable. Be good. Try to be good. Try to be less imperfect. Try to be holy. Otherwise, you will be thrown away. That is a warning. Oo. Tinatanggap tayo ng Panginoon sa kabila ng ating mga pagkukulang. Pero hindi ito nangangahulugang sige lang. Tuloy mo lang ang ginagawa mong pagkakasala. Anyway, tanggap ka naman ng Panginoon eh. No. The Lord loves us. But the Lord also wants us to be holy. The Lord loves us, but the Lord wants us also to be less imperfect. At yan din po palagi ko ang mahalaga sa kahit saang pagsasamahan, maging sa pamilya, maging sa parokya, maging sa lugar ng trabaho. Yes, tatanggapin ka namin. Pero dapat naman sikapin mong unti-unting baguhin yung hindi tama sa sarili mo. Acceptance does not mean toleration. Acceptance does not mean that it's okay to be bad. It is not okay. Kaya nga, Dalawang bagay siguro ang biyayang dapat nating hilingin sa misang ito. Una, ang matanggap natin ng isa't isa sa kabila ng ating mga kakulangan. Mahirap yun eh, no? Mahirap yun. No? Pagpasok mo sa opisina ngayon, makikita mo na yung kinaiinisan mo eh kasi mali yung mga ginagawa eh. But we have to accept that. But secondly, as persons concerned, dapat din naman unti-unti sinisikap nating baguhin ang dapat nating baguhin sa ating sarili. I repeat, acceptance does not mean toleration. Let us pray for one another that every day, we may try to be less and less imperfect. Amen. Please stand. Let us respond with faith to God's invitation to enter His kingdom in humility, let us ask him, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may never stop proclaiming the gospel to all people, places, languages, and cultures. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That peoples may not remain closed within particular traditions, but enrich one another in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who possess nothing in this world may inherit the richness of Christ's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who are discouraged by the pains of their trials and sickness may not close their hearts but learn to grow through their sufferings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the dead may be welcomed into, ki 
into the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Silently, let us lift up to the Lord our personal intentions as well as the intentions being offered in this Mass. Lord God, make us share in your love, open to all people, and welcome all with our brother Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Stand. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who, art who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our many sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of, God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please stand. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.